The master section is divided off from the rest of the board by the fact that the last two stereo fixed line channels, these mini channels, are on this kind of white painted background area. And that makes this clear virtual, I mean um, vertical dividing line between the input section, the input channel section of the board and the master section, right? Now on the master section it's a four subgroup board, so there's your four buses, or four subgroups, yeah? And they come out of these four sockets here, okay? And as far as I think they're unbalanced, you have to look at the specs online. I haven't got time in this short YouTube thing to check the specs. Um, basically, each of the subgroups has got a silo with accompanying lamp, and the subgroups individually can be switched into the left right mix or either side or both. Yeah? It's not like just one button to switch them into the left right mix, they can be assigned to the left or the right or both. That's your four subgroups. Now, to the right of that, we've got the main master left right fader, um, and at the I'm just ignoring this mono fader for the moment. I'll come to that in a minute. This is your final master left right fader. Okay, and that drives the balanced XLR outs at the top, all these two main outs here on quarter inch connectors. Yeah. Now, included at the top of the master fader is a little non latching talk back switch, and you've got a, a level control for the mic there. And um, this sends your talkback voice from the mic in behind that little hole there to the auxiliary 1-2 bus so that you can um, talk to the musicians in the playing area which is how the auxiliaries would be traditionally wired in a typical studio setup to provide a fallback to the musicians in the playing room, right? Now let's look at this little mono fader here. That's quite interesting. This is included and it's basically a summed mono feed of the master left right out but what's quite interesting about it is, is it's got a built-in switchable low pass filter which has an illuminating lamp and once you've switched in the low pass filter you can assign the low pass frequency cutoff 30 Hertz to 200 Hertz it's quite a good added extra that and the low pass switch to stop it being accidentally activated by the edge of your finger when you're twiddling knobs, it's got a little shield on each side to stop you accidentally pressing this, bringing in that low cut. Um, Berenger just say they've included this for driving a subwoofer, um, and of course you could use that to drive a subwoofer in a live situation as well. You know, powered 15 and 18 inch uh, bass speakers are very common now, and um, because bass is non-directional it doesn't need to be stereo, so you could use this to drive powered bass cabs at a gig, so it not only can be used in the studio. Um, okay, now over here at the bottom of the two little mini um, stereo fixed line channels you've got your auxiliary send masters, one and two, and they have a solo lamp and they are the final master outs driving these two auxiliary sends up, up here from all the auxiliary buses on the main channels and what have you, as well as the mini channels, right? You've then got this CD to tape, okay, which has this latching switch, but it's got the protective shields at the side to stop you accidentally pressing it. When you depress the switch, it cuts everything from the main output, your front of house output, and it routes the CD tape from up here into your front of house mix so that the audience can listen to some music while the bands change over. Okay. Now, you've got a phone control room matrix here. Um, I'm not going to have time to get into any of this in any real detail, being 10 minutes each. But basically, this is your phone control room feed. Now you've got a separate shared phone control room stereo socket up here. This will feed either a pair of monitor headphones for you to be working on as the engineer, or you wire that to a pair of powered speakers like these KRKs. Okay, and. Um, this is the volume control for that and you choose which source you're taking the feed to the phones or the monitors from. Now at the moment I've got the monitors in here wired up to the master left right out, that's the main out. But in a recording situation you wouldn't do that, you put your monitors there and this would be wired to your stereo master recorder. At a live gig this would be wired to your front of house mix and you'd use headphones to individually check channels without disturbing your front of house mix. Okay. But basically I can choose to listen in, in either the control room or on cans at a live gig. I can listen to the auxiliary 1-2 bus, which is my monitoring bus usually. I can listen to the CD tape if I need to cue anything. And but I can listen to the main left, uh, the main left right 
or I can listen to either of the subgroup pairs, one, two, and three, four, okay? We've got the metering then, uh, the top two LEDs, the right one functions as a power meter and the left one functions as a 48 volt phantom power uh, warning light and the switch for the phantom power is behind here next to the main switch, okay? The metering is double function, if you solo a channel like this, okay? Uh, by default it's in solo mode and the right of uh, the left hand lamp is saying solo lights but you can switch it into PFL mode okay uh, which is pre-fade listen and then because that's mono you will only see the left side of the meter working okay so you've got a choice of uh, normal solo or PFL um, okay that just leaves this feedback this nine band graphic with FBQ feedback detection and the two effects processors really and I haven't got a lot of time left because again this stupid 10 minute YouTube restriction um, well, I don't want to do, this is only a teaser trailer for the real review so I don't want to get in too deep but basically these are 24 bit effects processors you have a selection of presets here which are listed so you don't need to go out of book live and basically you've got a rotary controller here you scroll through the presets and then press it it's a button as well that sets the selected preset so you just you know basically send some signal into the effects processes like that yeah adjust the level with the master here and just choose your 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 preset effect the outputs for each effects processor you can um, send the effects processor here using this control out to your main left right mix but you can also option with these two pots to send the output from the uh, effects processor to either your auxiliary 1 or, or auxiliary 2 bus to get monitoring effects added. There's also another slight little twist which is if you here you've got this um, main it's hard to see actually, let's try over here. Yeah, this main sub switch right now by default this control on either effects processor here and here sends out to the main left right mix but if you switch this button in you can then use the second button to choose whether you're sending the output from this effects processor to either the 1 2 subgroup or the 3 4 subgroup so you can send your effects out to your subgroups. Um, the only downside with these effects is they're not editable. Okay, like say you get 10 delays and they've just each got different delay times, but sadly you cannot like adjust the delay time, which I can even do on my Behringer V amp, so I was a bit disappointed by that to be honest. The good news is the reverbs sound actually very good. And especially the small and ambience uh, and early reflection reverbs would really be useful in a live scenario for adding some extra power to drums without actually making them sound like they've got reverb on, you know, just giving them more definition. But for general live gig purposes, the, uh, the effects are actually fine. Um, it's just you can have a problem if, you, if you're doing MIDI work with this board and you need absolutely defined, very fixed delay times that are that are clocked to the tempo of the song, in which case you'd use software delays. But for your typical budget studio scenario, and as ancillary effects, and especially for live, they're very good. You also get a test tone, so you can, uh, because of the output routing of the effects processors, you can use this test tone to calibrate your, the inputs on your Mac PC recorder inputs or your hardware digital recorder. I've got about a minute left. And there's lastly, just to say that there's this nine band FBQ feedback uh, detection graphic. It functions as a standard 9-band graphic. It's strapped by default across the stereo left right out. I can drop it in EQ and all the lights come on and then it's just a standard graphic. Right? But what you do is you switch in the FBQ in and the lights go out and then what happens is if it detects feedback it'll flicker. The frequencies that are passing through will flicker. Should feedback occur in one of these nine bands, the flickering light will go solid red and then you just drop it to lower that frequency. Now, that is not so useful for front of house because if you drop that frequency, you're dropping the frequency the audience is hearing. But you can switch this graphic across the main, from the main to the auxiliary bus, which means you can apply this feedback detecting graphic across your monitoring chain at a live gig and that's where it really scores. And that's it. That's the board. Uh, this is the teaser trailer for dancetech.com. If you look at the links next to this, we'll be putting up full in-depth walkthroughs of this mixer with full explanations for beginners. 
So uh, come and have a look.